drums and enjoy it. Good stuff. Good stuff. Like I say, Keith Moon was one hell of a drummer, original drummer for The Who back in the 60s and 70s until he passed away. <laughs> so we're going to do a quick update here on this Red Cat, or not Red Cat, quick update on this Chuck Works Red Shift uh, No Prep Drag Race chassis. Basically, I've got a few other pieces in, as you might be able to see if you've been following along a little bit. Um, still got to get some tape so I can tape my tires, but I thought I'd just give a quick rundown. Um, just kind of detail it out a little bit. A few things I am going to change too. Um, and this is going to be one of them. I'm going to take this XT60 end off here and just put two bullet connectors so they can go right into the battery. I'll get shortened a little bit and I may even run these. Well, actually they're up there, so I'll probably leave those just like that, but I'm going to put bullet connectors on that to go directly to the battery. So basically what we're looking at is a Chuckworks RC Redshift chassis, um, which is just a chassis setup. Obviously no arms or anything else, just the center bars, the plate, both front and no bulkhead. Um, so we got Chuckworks RC chassis, and I'll start at the front with the drag racing concepts, zero degree front bulkhead here in red. Um, and that also, I mean, doesn't include, but I bought the zero degree, I mean, drag race kind of zero degree front shock tower and front bumper mount. These are obviously carbon fiber. I'm running RPM front A arms and RPM steering blocks up here. These are atomic. You can kind of see them here the red atomic uh, RC carriers, axle carriers. Um, Bearing fit was very nice at them. They didn't just slop in. They had to be pushed in and put, you know, pushed in with a little bit of force. So it's a nice snug fit. Your bearings won't slop around in those. Um, stock banded or Traxxas axles up front. Um, stock banded Traxxas links. And these are banded with links and banded with arms. Um, right now, I still have stock shock on front and rear. I've got different ones coming. Cheap um, China knockoff red aluminum shocks and 90 for the front, 100 for the rear, but I'll be going through those. That'll be its own video. So from the front end there, then of course we got the accelerator um, DE racing accelerator rim, gambler rims and accelerator front tires. The gambler rims for the accelerator wheels. It's a nice thin half inch wide um, wheels and still a 2230, which is kind of neat. Um, from there, of course, we got a stock Traxxas steering servo, um, 2075 steering servo, and a China knockoff 25 spline um, steering horn. The stock steering horn was unsuitable as it bound in the travel when you're trying to turn. Um, we have a McLaren Racing or McLaren. Um, RC 
electronics. Um, one, MMX Pro 160 ESC running the MMR drag tuned 4.5 turn McLaren motor. Um, from there, come back into the tranny, which is a stock banded tranny, although it does have the hot racing um, diff case filled with Kraken racing, Kraken RC 500,000 weight diff fluid. Up front in the front carriers, I'm sorry, the bell crank is also a hot racing bell crank. Turn that into aluminum um, to stiffen up and tighten up steering. And it's pretty good. There is a little bit of shake in here still. As you can see, I'm getting just a little wiggle that slop throughout the system. Um, mostly on a, lot, a bit, bit of it is right here on the ball ends. So I may put some Dubro adjustable ball ends on there. Kind of get rid of a little bit of that slop. Back to the tranny. We got, as I said, the stock Manda tranny. This is stuck in a pro line case um, in reverse position. And so it's, this is a mid motor setup. So instead of the transmission and motor hanging off the rear of the buggy, it's flipped around and the transmission and motor is in front of the shock tower going to the middle part of the chassis setup. I want to say buggy, the chassis. <coughs> Um, and I have the, actually the three degree blocks, not the zero degree blocks. I put the three degree blocks underneath here. Um, the transmission, RPM transmission comes with the two tow blocks. And it has three degrees and zero degrees. I run the three degree blocks and then the stock bandit rear arms in normal orientation. I had them flipped for a while and drilled shock holes up here um, when I was playing with the configuration, trying to figure out the best way I've found it. And this doesn't get rid of all the toe in the rear but it get, gets rid of most of it um i'm probably setting at like one degree maybe two degrees i don't have any setup to check it but by looking at it eyeing it up it's only a two degrees maybe three at max um toe in so it's the rpm training case with the stock traxxas bandit vxl training setup with the hot racing diff case um from there, everything else is stock, the spur and everything else. Um, I don't remember what I stuck on here. I think I have a 18 tooth pinion currently with the 32 pitch. So I believe it's a 54 tooth spur. And that's where I'm going to just start to see where I'm at with this setup. So anyways, with these three degree toe blocks put in the rear and the um stock banded arms that gets rid of almost all the toe now these toe blocks they got a mark left and right i do have them switch my left block is actually on the right side and the right block is on the left side even though it's three degrees um i found switching them around took out a little bit more of the toe because there there seems to be still a little bit of tweak in here so by switching the toe blocks left for the right side and then putting the arms on normally is the right arm on the right side, left arm on the left side, and then, you know, pinning them together, that took care of the, almost all the toes. So the, the rear tires, when I get them put on, are very much, I don't know if you'll be able to see this that well with just the cones on here. Um, oh, I got the nut on there. I got to take that off. Derp. I'll see if you can kind of see it a little bit. It, I mean, it, it's running pretty darn square, but there's still just a little bit of toe going into the inside of the center. So that ain't so bad. Um, the option from this point, and I tried the other toes and RPM arms flipping around. The other option is warning the zero degree block and the RPM arms flipped around. So the blocks on the right side, left block, zero degree on the left side, right block on the right side, but turning your RPM A arms backwards and putting them on the opposite sides. And that took care of most of the toe, but you're going to have to redraw a hole in your shock in the back of the A arm, put your shock mount on the lower shock arm. So there's that to consider. So that's about it from there. Um, you know, on the inside of the tranny and that, that setup, getting rid of that toe. It's a little trick. 
like I said, the other option, which I have a set here, and I'm probably going to order another set. The other option is to get the Custom Works adjustable rear arms. Now, you can get the slash style, which are wider. I went with the standards, and they're a little bit thinner, like a banded arm. Uh, and when I looked, it built, they're supposed to mount right up, but there's a little slot, so you'll have to add some uh, shims, some washers on your hinge pin arms between your toe block and your arms to take up that slot. With the RPM toe blocks and the bandit track stock bandit arms, there was a little slot back here. These were sliding, and I actually just took one thin washer, um, a normal M3 washer, and was able to slide that between the front of the arm and the front toe block, put the pins through and get it positioned right and slide the pin through. And that took care of all the up and down slop, but the arm is still very smooth and easy. And you can hear that's kind of bumping the thing. I got to get, I got orders for standoffs to get the proper standoff in there when I do the other shocks. So from there, anyways, we run proud of the tranny. Um, hot racing diff case with the stock bandit diff um, gears and then the Kraken uh, RC 5000 diff weight to MIP bandit width um, heavy duty arms into the S or not SDRC I'm sorry atomic um, brand um, rear stub carriers and then of course the drag racing concepts rear shock tower mount which binds the shock tower in the rear um, training together and then of course the um, drag racing concepts rear shock tower and then the drag racing I'm sorry this is the Chuck works not dragon it's Chuck works RC um, wheelie bar it comes with the redshift for the price so when you purchase the, the redshift um, chassis from Chuck works I believe it's $140 and then shipping and the wheelie bar comes part of it. The red wheels don't. You don't get the wheels. And I trimmed and had to thin my back bar support down. And these links do not come with it. You got to supply your own links. So pick up a set of links that are adjustable somewhere between 85 and 100 millimeters, depending on where you want to set your heights at. I've got a set of cheap Chinese knockoff links coming that are um, red back here to kind of match the scheme these are drag racing concepts rear um, drag wheels with the squared wheel or squared um, ring on them you can just buy the uh, rings and I got a couple of drag racing concepts bushings coming for those to ride on right now I just got some old body mounts modified to fit in there so that'll take care of that um, so yeah so what I still have coming that I still have to flop is I can say I got the red adjustable links coming to get an easier adjustment and faster able ability to adjust the um, wheelie bar height and stuff. Different shocks that I have to go all the way through and turn them into well functioning shocks. 100 millimeters for the rear, uh, 90 millimeters for the fronts. They'll get limiters and shock oil adjustments, everything else. And from there, fast steady ceramic bearings throughout the entire build. Um, wheel bearing carriers, the transmission, bell crank, wherever there's a bearing, it's a fast eddy ceramic bearing. And that should really, you know, uh, loosen resistance, lessen resistance, and make this thing quite a bit faster. To the tires for the rear, these are Proline 12 bolt um, F11 beadlock wheels. They come with six bolt metals um bead locks and foams for the hoosiers you can see the hoosier in there it's got them flipped inside out so i can heat them and tape them when i get myself a little bit of good quality gorilla tape and get those taped up from together you can see i taped my foams already i've been doing this for a while on different stuff found out back 10 years ago or so especially with the hpi buggy which was a fifth scale gasser running a 23 to 32 cc weed whacker engine basically i had one that was reed cased putting out just about seven horsepower at 
19,000 RPM that was a beast of a little weed whacker motor. Anyways, that thing would blow tires left and right. So we found out back then doing a quality tape job on not only the foams, but the inside of the tire with good quality duct tape. Um, Gorilla tape was fairly new back at the time and one of the best out there. It really lessened the expansion and ballooning of the tires, making them last longer because they just blow out and rip off and pop out of the bead. Um, those had to be black wheels too, obviously. So, But these are just, like say, the Proline F11s with Proline Hoosiers. Um, I could buy the wheel expansion bands. I've seen them anywhere from $5 to $15 to $20 bucks a pair. But taping has always worked for me. I might buy a pair of those expansion rings or anti-expansion rings, whatever you want to call them, to slide in here. I may go, look, I got a 3D printer, so I may just print up a set and find an SDL file and just try to design something really quick myself, make it easy, um, give it a little bit of curve to kind of follow the curve of the tire. We'll see what happens with it. I may do that, but most likely I won't. Most likely I'll keep using tape because, one, it's cheap and it's easy. And most importantly, it's been proven to work well. Um, at any point, that's about the build. Um, oh, with the bead lock rings instead of the six bolt um, pro line units, I've got these um, carbon fiber 12 holes. These are corrupted carbon um, 12 hole bead lock rings for these bead lock wheels. And that's pretty much it. Um, I think I've ran through everything. Oh, there is one more thing which I did a video on. And that last thing, of course, is the body. I'll try to get it lined up a little bit. That's pretty good set right there, which the body, if anybody's familiar with Shark RC, just released the Scarecrow, which the Scarecrow is a 1970 Pontiac Le Mans. It's a really nice representation. They've done a really decent job. Of course, it's not set right, not setting perfect. It's gonna come up a little bit. Now it's too far up, but they did a really, really good job with this pine. I need to try to give you a better look here in this video. Ram Eric's on the hood. Front nose cone is really, really well, even to these slightly squared corner light bezels. Um, they did a really good job. We got the spoiler dropped real low so you can trim this thing. But one of the only things that people complain about are these wheel wells. They are a tad off, not much. But it's not a licensed body. And you probably would have got sued had he made it too darn close. And any closer, <laughs> he did an exceptionally good job. And the GM's not afraid of suing small guys making RC car bodies out of, you know, Lexan. So not, they're like Thraxis that way. They're not beyond suing somebody if they think it's going to help them because they got the power and the money to do it and the, you know, abilities. So one of the sad things. But this is the body that's going to be on this bad girl. I think she's going to look great. So the only thing I got to figure out is what I'm actually going to do with the body. Obviously... With this being a red shift chassis and using drag race concepts, red pieces and these atomic red pieces, which match really well. I'm very, very happy considering these are two different companies, probably using two different systems. And two, you know, obviously these are atomics are coming out of China. I think drag race concepts are, they might be made in China and done and sent here. They may be made in America. I don't know for sure. But these reds are almost identical. There's a very slight hue difference. So it's going to match out and look really well when it's done. The red shocks look about the same as these atomics, so they should be very close too. So basically there is the first 
of my 2021 no prep drag builds. Um, the Chuckworks RC Redshift no prep drag chassis. This is a specific no prep drag chassis um, that Chuckworks design set up off his other tracks as um, chassis setups. If you're into short course racing or midget racing or late model modified racing, um, Chuckworks has a couple chassis um, for each of those classes and the prices are roughly the same 120 to 140 dollar range for his composite chassis aren't carbon fiber there's composite mix um if you have any questions chuck's very open he's you know willing to talk to people and probably not release any of his trade secrets but let you know as much as you need to know to get a good build out of his setup so if you got one of those go for it i get nothing for these i bought it i will seen it i'm looking at new stuff i'm an old rc'er but new to no prep so this is all new to me which is kind of why i you know enjoy spreading this information because it seems to be blowing up a lot of people are looking for information and nothing makes somebody leave a hobby or get out of something they really thought they would enjoy which they probably will faster than bad information because when people take that and they use it and it doesn't work they get frustrated and that leads to people leaving the hobby long before they should so getting good information in anything like RCing or voting <laughs> um, for who the next president is going to be is amazingly important um, and from there, you know, I, I can't stress that enough. So at this point, I'm going to let you go. And at the case of possibly losing some people potentially now or later, oh, well, Trump 2020, baby. We'll see you later.